day two at Star Wars Celebration, Saturday the 16th. Is it the 16th? It I, I, the I don't know. Fatigue has set in. Not so much fatigue with Star Wars itself. That's still going strong, but fatigue physically. Uh, I am drained, as you can probably tell from this video. Um, I have been queuing all day for autographs. That's been my Saturday today. I haven't got to check out any of the panels, any of the good stuff. Um, I did pick up wristbands. There was the um, Creatures, Droids and Aliens of The Force Awakens and Anthony Daniels Without Protocol, both of which I didn't get to see because I was queuing for all the good stuff. So Tom, uh, in front of the camera this time, yesterday you were filming, doing a great job of that. Um, you got into the Creatures, Droids and whatever it is, Aliens of The Force Awakens. So was, um, Yeah, I did. It was Creatures, Droids and Aliens of The Force Awakens. Um, and it was it was actually really a really interesting talk. Um, I mean, myself, I was very tired today, but it was it sort of kept me awake and kept me going. Um, and they they talked quite a lot about sort of how they made each of the um, the droids and how even though it's it, some of the aliens and creatures are only only on screen for like a second, hmm. it's the fact that they had to meticulously plan out what they looked like and just couldn't just like make something up the day before um but what they had was warwick davis came on and he interviewed a panel and it was essentially like an assembly line so it'd start from the con conceptual designs all the way through to actually making them animatronic so they showed the concept art on screen on the um, panel no they showed what they what they showed was um each of the departments making what they, mm. what they were they didn't have any conceptual art on them um, but I quite enjoyed it it was really it was really interesting um, they the, the hair and makeup to design Chewbacca's or to get the hair onto Chewbacca they had to individually thread each hair through the through the costume mm. and it was it was, sounds painstakingly horrible and it it just it reminded it reminds you that you know a lot of work does go into the into the films and no matter what my opinion of the Force Awakens was it's it's actually really interesting to see creatures and effects like that being put on screen again. <laughs>
and um, we're probably going to lose all our viewership right now but our views on The Force Awakens weren't particularly <laughs> glowing when we went to see it uh, my opinion hasn't changed on the movie at all but it is what you say and we're kind of a broken record when we do reviews because we're a huge proponent of um, practical effects yes. uh, CGI definitely has its place but if you can do it with a puppet if you can do it with an animatronic whatever I always think it's better to do it that way. and uh, BB-8 the droids from episode 7 apparently they didn't bring him out no they didn't they um Instead, what they did uh, was bring out the new a creature from Rogue One, right? Um, which they called the Space Monkey. And essentially, what happened there was uh, it was a, a man in a suit, as as always is standard for Star Wars, pretty much nowadays, apart from the prequel film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what they what they had was an animatronic. Uh, his face was anim was controlled animatronically, mm. um, but he was moving around doing really cool gestures, um, throwing Ewoks at Warwick Davis. <laughs> so as they're walking around the set, the guys are giving them direction, they're taking direction from the director and relaying it to them as well, and keeping them safe as well, because a lot of the time, because they've got no vision, they could quite, you know, just walk into things. Yeah. So as well as... As well as performing the faces, we also have to keep them safe quite often. And sometimes they don't listen to us and they just uh, kind of misbehave. He just threw me at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue with him, though. No, no. Well, I'm just coming down there now. So, so we, uh, the character is Nick, isn't it? Nick Kelly. Yeah, Nick Kelly, ladies and gentlemen. So, Nick is out there. <laughs> So as well as the other choices, we also had a lot of rod puppets in The Force Awakens. We had, um, let's say, Bon Raku puppets. We had... <laughs> Did you get me those plans? <laughs> and we had straightforward hand puppets as well, very much. <laughs> But it was really, really good. That was that was really exciting to see, um, because what essentially what they have, or well, they brought out more animatronic. It was basically animatronic heads. Um, one of them was the creature that comes out of the sand in the Force Awakens and moves his head about. That was apparently done on about 50 quid during someone's lunch. Mm. Um, and the others were animatronically controlled, but they had programming within them where it was automated so they didn't have to remote control it it was just cycled through different motions and it was all very very real it looked incredibly realistic and some of the facial expressions they could pull were just mind-blowingly complicated mm. um, especially Warwick Davis's um, character from the for from the Force Awakens his, his costume or his the head of his costume it's the one with the huge goggles isn't yeah. it yeah um, like that was the nose was moving around and it looked all goopy and horrible and it was it was quite interesting to see and like i said you you, you kind of forget how much work goes into stuff like this and i mean as i was saying before the film might not be any good but the effects mm. in it are mind but especially the animatronics and the the sort of costume department mm. all their stuff is is great um and it really it really i suppose it made me appreciate the work on it more mm. from seeing that and they're all very interesting people um, and yeah it was actually a really good show and that's that's kind of what I was sort of hoping to get into uh, I made sure I queued pretty early for that yeah about 11 it started at 12 but I got in the queue for 11 it was actually really cool to see it mm. um, alive and I mean it's fan it's fantastic it just met it just really does blow your mind mm. just how because it doesn't just go straight out from the concept it has to go through all these different departments it has to get molded it has to get um, fitted the actors have to get fitted into the cost into the costumes and then and then it has to go into the paint there yeah. paint it and then if they're wearing masks they have to design the masks so they can see and they can breathe Sometimes that means that you don't get anything like you can't breathe out of here, but it has like fans yeah. pushing air through. And some some of the they they told us about some of the um, some of the guys in costume had to like could only look at the floor because their heads were like 
all peripheral vision yeah. just and completely it obscured. Was, it was crazy, and the performers were real. Like, must have been one hell of a job to mm. go and do that. You yeah. tell they'd love it though, because being Star Wars and just to be in a Star Wars movie. But um, yeah, no, yeah. you brought up Rogue One and stuff like that, and I'm not sure if we really talked about it as much as we could have yesterday. So we did see a lot of new stuff, basing that behind the scenes. Speaking of the creature that you just mentioned, yeah. um, and I've got to be honest, based on my opinions on that, I know I didn't get to see the panel, seeing all the creatures. That would have been phenomenal from a fan of practical effects but you could tell again from the behind the scenes of that with a uh, with a uh, gareth edwards um that he is honoring the original trilogy yeah. by using mostly practical effects practical aliens uh locations that was a big proponent in the behind the scenes footage which i think has gone on the internet now the, the reel that we got three times uh, in the live stream no trailer unfortunately um still angry about that yeah. but in that behind the scenes footage you could tell that at least from a production standpoint it's in the right place um, of course there are effects in it it's going to be because it's star wars but i think that i'm more excited for rogue one than i think i was force awakens now i'm saying that now after i've seen force awakens i'm sure if i cast my mind back to when force awakens was coming out within the year the hype was real um, i was defending every trailer it looked incredible and then i saw the movie and it disappointed me. It wasn't terrible, it's watchable, but it wasn't what I wanted from it. Um, but Rogue One definitely looks interesting. Um, everything we've seen so far, you've seen the creatures in person, we both saw the live stream. Yeah. Uh, I think that's definitely gonna be a good one and I really hope it is because it is shaping up to be a great movie, even though we ultimately know the outcome of it. Um, even more so when one of the cast members accidentally let slip a leak, which uh, he's probably in some hot water for that now. But um, yeah, for, so if I'm just gonna go into what I did, I'll keep it really, really quickly. I was just um, autographing today. I was just getting all the cues for most of the cast. I still. Need as of this video I still need to get Mark Hamill's and I still need to get Anthony Daniels they're the main two I'm shooting for there's a few other ones there's a lot of the minor characters from the original trilogy um, there's also what's his name Daniel Logan who played um, a young Boba Fett in Attack of the Clones uh, nothing against the guy he looked like he was having fun he was you know standing up from his desk and taking pictures with everyone it seemed like a really cool guy but my priority is the ones from the original um, I got Jeremy Bullock who didn't say a whole lot but he had like this uh, this presence about him even though he was just in the suit for the original Boba Fett I don't think he provided the voice I think that actor sadly passed away but uh, it was cool to see him there nonetheless I got Peter Mayhew again not very talkative but we've got to remember that these guys have been doing this probably since the 70s when the original Star Wars came out and it is a job ultimately it's a long day it's repetitive you're doing the same thing over and over again you've got loads of fans coming up to you and i didn't want to be that fan from the person going up it's very difficult to because you do see them and it does feel dreamlike it's surreal because you are seeing them there in person and there's always been that disconnect before that with me seeing them on screen seeing them in the person was great but um it's very difficult to not gush and go like oh like with peter mayhew like oh i love chewbacca star wars is amazing but you've got to remember that everyone does that yeah. the thousands of people they get through per day um is just insane so we didn't say all that much and i wanted to just you know get away because he's got a whole bunch of other people uh let's see who else did i get i got carrie fisher's now, Carrie Fisher is amazing. She's great. Uh, we're going to a talk tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning, I believe it is. I'm really looking forward to that because she's just she just says stuff. You know, she no bones about her. She'll just say anything she wants. So that's going to be great. She glittered up my hand. Unfortunately, all the glitter's gone off now. Uh, but she signed my post when she was really cool. And she had her dog Gary there as well. That was great. Um, I who else did I get? I got Ray Park. Now Ray Park is probably out of the ones I've got signed so far was the coolest one. He was really really humble. Uh, you could tell that he's all about the fans. Although it may be a strain on him, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's boring. He didn't show it, he got up and he a picture with everyone. Um, I think he was even doing like photo ops where you have to pay quite a lot to get a photo, but if someone was in the queue getting an autograph and you've got your phone on you, you just say, can I get a quick pic? He's like, yeah, sure. You know, he's all about that. So he was probably the coolest one, but um, moment of the day for me, seeing Carrie Fisher and getting her to sign the Star Wars poster I got today was incredible. It was a dream come true. And I'm sure it will be for Mark Hamill if I am lucky enough to get his autograph. So uh, that's pretty much been our day two. We didn't get to a lot of panels today, 
unfortunately. Uh, apologies from just how shattered I am. We're outside now. It's nice to be outside in the fresh air because it is really, really You're stuffy like in that convention. The yeah, I feel like just, just yeah, just dive over the fence straight in there. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for our video today. So we'll be back tomorrow, final day of Star Wars celebration. We've got Carrie Fisher's talk and also the final celebration. I'm going to be queuing up overnight tonight, which really isn't a good combination with how I'm feeling right now. Uh, George is too. He can't be in this video because he's in some kind of Q&A panel, Empire, so I'm sure you'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a long, cold night in the convention centre floor. Uh, I'll be tucked up in bed. Oh, you're lucky. But I will have a wristband, hopefully. Hopefully, and um, the Hasbro goodness, so I can buy, start buying some merchandise tomorrow because I really haven't bought anything. I've spent outrageous amounts of money on people's signatures so far, but I do want to come away with some tangible action figure or something like that. But anyway, that'll do it for our video. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, uh, hopefully, a bit more awake and fresh. At least you will be. So until then, we'll see you guys next time.